Recently, my competitive team, Clam Crashers, was coached by Gem of Squid School, and this is going to be the entire VOD from that coaching session. If you haven't already, go check out the video on my main channel because I would love to do a series where I review every single Splatoon coach on Medify, and if that video does well, then I would be happy to continue this series, but please do go show some support to that video, and let's go ahead and get into the VOD. Yeah, yeah, Alrighty, okay, I'm gonna start a group message. Oh, let's go. Oh my god. Okay. Gem Squid School. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the team leaves immediately though. Like, <laughs> right, I'm, I'm not gonna add Biped to the group chat, I guess. Oh, sad face. Rest in peace, Biped. He's not dead. Oh my gosh, there it is, there it is, there it is. There okay, it is. I guess I'll start the voice call over there. Hello, hello. Uh, hello. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Going well. I'm just gonna take a second and go down the line and turn everybody's volume down because I always do that. And that's what I've got it normed to. There we go. Uh, okay. Right. Now none of you are too loud. It's great. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, I actually yeah, decided yeah, to like, yeah, turn yeah. you up like the max. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, do you guys have uh, a recording or a replay code that you'd like to go over? Uh, no, we don't. I, um, yeah, we were actually just talking about this last night. I wasn't really sure what a live session would entail. Um, this is our first coaching session, so, um, I, no, we don't have any VODs or anything, uh, prepared. Do you have, um, a replay code from your, somewhere in your last 50 that was the whole team playing? Um, um we played yeah, last think... night some 2v2s, um. Yeah, all good. <laughs> Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Let's go. Okay. Alrighty. Where is. Where oh no, okay. 52 got. Bottom one, got one on the bottom. 52 got me in on. Got 52 with the bottom one? Okay. Here, show them. Alrighty, I'll, I'll grab the soda. Thank you. I'm about to get bubbly. I have hammer. Right. I pushed up. Explosher is still uh, far left. Oh no, Rain's gonna get me. There we go. Just keep telling right. Got him. Oh, someone's just bad shot. Got him. No, not the wave. Uh, <laughs> no, not the wave cancel. Right. Oh, you're in control, guys? Uh, I'm jumping oh, no, to you, Al. Okay. Yes, you're you're soda on your jump. Soda. Thank you. You're back. I'll jump to you, Alex. Thank you for taking this order. I'm about to get a big bubbler again. We okay, got one with the bomb. Alrighty. Oh, watch out, watch out. Watch out for the bomb. Okay. I have hammer. Heavy is on top top left. Alrighty. We can go here in a minute. Oh, watch, watch this video, bomb. Video bomb. Oh, uh, on the left side. Okay, no cool. No! no. There is no way. Ooh. The radius. <laughs> Oh no way. Run. No way. Alright, alright. Big bubbler on? Oh. oh, I died. The one on the right side. You need the soda? Where no, rip. I did not see the person. Run out of bombs. Okay. There's 52. There's 52. Kill it well? I don't know. Oh, the top. Here, I got soda. I'll throw it right there. Okay, we can go with my ink jet. Yeah, I'm gonna push with hot bombs. Push him back. Okay, yeah. got one. Splasher for me. I got the I got the big one. Splasher, cap them. All right, we could be capitalized on the push. Oh, oh okay. shot, 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 shot mid, shot shot mid. If, 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 no, if, 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 Soda uh, in the out. bubble. Gonna get destroyed in a bit. Watch out, Eddie. Oh, well. Throwing out a bomb? Yeah. Okay, they're they're all in mid, I think. Go out, out, out. Trade with 52. Too. I trade, I trade out. I'm gonna capitalize oh, right. it. Well, I'm jumping again. Alrighty. As soon as we regroup, we should go with my deck. Bubbler? I have hammer. Alrighty, I'm in. Ink jetting. Cut a kill. We can push. Got heavy. 
Thank you. Right, okay, we, yeah, we can, we can, we can, we can have a Bosch is on left. Oh, damn. I got him. I got him. Very nice, nice, mate. Okay, as long as we capitalize this, we can win this. Uh, one going top, 53. Or, or, oh, down. rip, 52, yeah. I got 52. No, wait, he got him. Okay, Ray finished him up. Okay, watch out. They're coming in that lane. On top of. Okay, they're pushing out. Got a bomb? Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, hey. I have so much Oh, we can't keep. I put soda down. Uh, Al, I think I'm going to Watch out, I'm gonna jump, might be dead. Got okay. Maybe dead. I'm not big goblin. I think I'm dead. I mean, I didn't need that. Run out of bombs? No, I'm probably closer. Got explosion. I traded. I'm gonna spam out of bombs. So push him back. Where's, uh, there's Heavy. Jumping, jumping. He is also top left again. Good to see him, man. I got one yeah, kill. One down, one down. We can go with him. hammer. Down. Okay, got one. Got two. Oh, I got kill. Explosure. Watch out, right Wait, explosion there. back there. It's only explosion. Yeah. Got explosion? No, explosion's really weak. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. That's easy. 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 Where's he at? He just Okay, okay. Nah, no, rip. Good okay. Nice. Oh, nice. Okay, nice. Nice. Uh, Ray, Thank you. There he is again. We got back uh, back okay. back. So does in Ray's bubble. Okay. I'm, okay, I'm gonna spam my rounds again. Okay. Heavy's in mid again. Heavy got me. Where's Heavy? Okay. Come on, Kale. Jumping, jumping to where? Right. Oh, Heavy. Okay, there you go. Just weak. I didn't get anyone with that. Got him. Okay, Explosher's the only one. No. I'm about to get Oh, wait. Him. Jump He's right dead. here. Got him. Nice. Wipe out, wipe out. Okay. Alright, no, alright. You're good. Let's spam out of bombs. He's been pushing up here. Yeah. I'm doing that. Okay. I shouldn't get caught out in the mid. Halfway to soda. Okay. I'm close to Jack. Watch out, spamming, spamming. Watch out, drop. Over here, over here. 52 drops. Right, right. Oh, right. Right. oh, got it. Watch out, left. No. Nice one. Okay, okay, okay. Big bubbler. Nice. GG. GG. Let's go. Let's go. The comeback, though. One hell of a push. Oh, my God. Ah, that was a good one. That was a good one. Let's use that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah. It was no, a nice I, take, I think. No, my heart was the whole time. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, I love all my I silvers. Love you love to see it. <laughs> oh, at least this one. Very carry. Question mark. Absolutely. Let's see. Yeah, Yo, the fist bump. Number one ultra yeah, stamp user. Obviously, the MVP. <laughs> oh, yeah. Huge, huge. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm ready. Dudes, yeah. Uh, so give me that uh, code real quick, and we can get started. All right, sounds all good. Right, 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 right. Oh, I can't, I can't access the analogs. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> uh, I have to leave the room right to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll leave. That's fine. There's analogs. Where is, where do I find the code? <laughs> uh, it's upload. Oh, uh, you, yeah, right? you gotta upload it and then it should show up. Yeah, computer view replays, upload instead of play. Yeah, I got it. Oh, it's long. All right, let me type it in the message. Okay, okay, okay. I probably should have played a little bit with uh, Wiper before this. I was, play I was playing around with uh, <laughs> Tri Stringer. <laughs> no, you still did really good in the camp pushes. Uh, We're just heavily really needed. At the KDs again. Ray carries as well. You'll have to see it. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I already know. I died too much. Fine, right, guys. I, I got nine it, coolers. I put it in there. Nine coolers? Yeah. I needed them. I needed them, so thank you yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was literally feeling me about oh, I was shaking the whole time. Yeah, no, it was still fun. Hella fun. 
It's a bit yeah. Bad. Yeah. yeah. There you. There you go. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, couple of thoughts that I, were that are just kind of miscellaneous things that I was thinking about while watching the first time through. Um, yeah. One thing was, uh, on comms, make sure that what you're saying is actually something that your teammate needs to know. Um, and, you know, it's one thing to be, you know, like, hey, we got this, guys. Like, I like that I'm hearing that sort of thing. Um, just be, be sure that, like, what you're saying matters to somebody other than you. Because if, right. if you're the only person who is, like, processing that thought, and you're just processing it out loud, that's taking up space on the comms that somebody else could be using. Oh, okay. um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if it's like, you know, oh, I, I underestimated the bomb's blast radius, all you need to say is dead bomb, and you can be done. No. Um, that's so, right, yeah, yeah. Things like that, uh, player positions are a lot less important in callouts than I think people tend to think. Um, it's like it, on one hand, it's it's good practice to try and just be able to like locate every player on the map and be like, that one's on snipe and, and that one's in closed and I, I'm so good at this. Like and it, it's it's good to be able to say that quickly so that when you need to call something like that out quickly that you can. But you don't want to be a GPS because yeah. th this it, it doesn't work in this game to try and be a GPS. Uh, people move too fast and by the time you're done saying one of them, the other one's moved and you're also not making a plan. So try to move more on, on comms towards verbs, towards here's what we're gonna do. Um, and we definitely had some of that, which was good. Um, just it made like, if you're gonna add something to the chatter, just make sure that it's something that one of your teammates will actually be able to use. All right. Um, okay. One last thing is that it felt across the board like we're just a little bit too comfortable standing in front of each other. We're a little bit too com too comfortable, like, moving onto the same line that our teammates are on. A um, bunch of opportunities for collapse that I was seeing, which would be a lot scarier if, if someone had been pressuring you at that time, or if a bomb had gotten thrown at you. Um, so we'll, we'll try and point out some of these more specific situations, but... There are definitely some cases where I'm like, that is something that could just get you both in a lot of trouble. Um, right, yeah, one, yeah. Of the, one of the things you want to do is spread out, not just so that you're not dying to the same bomb, but also so that you're applying pressure to multiple different places. And there were some times where it felt like you were all coming from the same place, so they only had to look in one direction to see all of you. Um, that makes sense. So. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Right, look, at, look at this formation right here. If you've got someone poking around the left-hand side, they don't have to do anything. They're not going to do anything. I'm going to just say straight up, there is a heavy and an explode on that side of the map. Y'all don't y'all don't have any right to be on that side of the map and actually yeah. try and commit to a fight. <laughs> but what you can do is be over there just enough that the explode has to put a shot over there. Now the Explo is not looking at mid, and that means that whoever is in mid on the enemy team, they have like a little bit less support on anything they're going to try and do. Um, if they spread out like that and you guys don't, now you're surrounded. They can all attack the same, same place, but you guys can only attack them one at a time. Um, and that's a, definitely a big strategic misplay. Um, that's... <laughs> Did you, yeah. did you guys see the, uh, yeah. the video I did on the manga? Um, that's that's yeah. the way that you get x fold okay? <laughs> that's it's not a thing that should ever actually happen, but if if the, you, you give them the opportunity to spread out, they will surround you at least a little bit. Better to, better to have a semicircle than a full circle, but still, same difference. 
So that's something we want to work on. We want someone to be in the middle position where Waylord is pretty much all the time. Uh, if you don't have someone watching that position, then there are multiple angles you can be flanked from. Um, someone can come around the far right or someone can go through mid and then get onto the snipe platform from there. Um, and both of those are unguarded if you don't position someone in that approximate spot. Um, I, I would say it's probably best to either have the blaster or the wiper trying to go around the closed area, the, the hallway down there. Um, and then you can either threaten to poke up over the ledge with the blaster or throw, throw torpedoes over the side with the wiper and then have the mm -hmm. other one playing the zone up on you know the snipe area to push from the more conventional angle. Um, I'd probably put the blaster on the flank because they're going to be less helpful on the, the painting anyway. And uh, they're still going to be able to hit over the ledge. And they're going to be able to fire blaster shots more consistently than the wiper's going to be able to torpedo. But you can both definitely fill that role pretty well. And that way, instead of everyone being on the same spot and you know a single bomb threatening all of you, a single booyah bomb threatening all of you, you're spread out a little more so that while they move in to go after like the two people with the booyah bomb targets, they're getting shot in the side by someone else. Yeah. All right. True that. True that. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so here, um, we get rushed down a little bit by the uh, 52. Um, ballpoint being in that position is probably <laughs> yeah, yeah. not a very strong <laughs> spot. You probably want something more midline focused in that sort of area because it's you, there's something in mid that's blocking a lot of your shots. You don't have the high ground to see what you can see elsewhere. And uh, it's get, letting them get a little bit closer to you before you're going to see them, which is always yeah. a risk. You, you always want to play your range. So um, that loss. OK, we do end up trading. So it works out OK. But uh, yeah, at this point, goal is just like paid for special. Um, we're moving around a lot, which is making it so that we're not getting as much paint on the ground as we could. Um, but I understand that, like, you're worried you're going to get pushed at any moment. Thing is, literally one weapon on their team actually wants to push you. And it is there. <laughs> yeah. So against this kind of a team comp, like, you can probably be a little bit more forward. But as soon as the explo is anywhere near in range of you, you definitely don't want to get caught out. So. All right. So big bubbler goes out, and so we definitely want to follow up on this. And it, notice we're all in the same place. They just need to look in two different places. And like one side of mid, the other side of mid. Um, if we're coming around from the side a little bit more, we've got a better opportunity to maybe get a pick on that X-Blow. Um, we're getting some of them looking sideways, so some of them aren't painting the zone and we're going to get the zone and then we're going to move across the zone really quickly because it paints for our color like there's a kind of cascading series of things that can happen if we distract on one side but now literally the entire team is getting walled out by a single ink storm yeah everybody had to back yeah. up there just because of one ink storm um and, and you can circumnavigate that in multiple different ways so if anyone's pushing up here with the 52 gal, you guys get wiped. Um, like, this is a really strong play because you're all stuck here. And if there's anybody covering the escape routes here, it's open season. Like, you guys have no cover. Best it's going to happen is like a two for three trade, and you're still going to get wiped. Um, but they just kind of can't do that slash don't do that because they have a heavy and an explode. Um, and so you guys just win that fight and you get an extra chance back into this. Um, so now it's you're able to get a little bit of control there. Now, from here, um, again, Waylord getting just a little bit too far yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah. Remember that like this is a double backline comp um, and that even if you think you have an advantage against one of the backliners, the other one's just gonna crossfire. So your job in a double backline where like you're the single backline on your team you're not the one who's gonna push in and get the splats on them you're the skirmisher you're the one who they have to deal with first because you're the one who can hit them first but it's somebody else who's actually going to be able to move in and do something about them a lot of the time um because as soon as you just try and take one of the fights against their backliner 
the other backliner is going to get involved and nobody else is going to be able to help you and you're going to be in trouble. So, yeah, I think I did that. Then, then as well. Back off a little bit. Okay. I like the poking that the blaster does there. They do end up having to back off, which makes sense. Um, I probably wouldn't back off all the way like this. Like, if they're going to give up some space, then take the space they're giving you. Um, it looks like maybe we're trying to set up to get another bubbler on zone. I guess that's maybe the positioning we're going for here. Because, like, backing up this far, now the heavy can actually, like, drop into that right-hand side down there and take a little bit more control than we need to give them. Um, like, we want to either be right on top of them or just outside of their range. Uh, but if we go outside of their range and then just keep backing up, then we're giving up space. Yeah. True that. Okay. So again, the rain displaces literally all of us. Um, rain is something that like will definitely be a problem, um, especially on a map that's this small. But there are ways around it, and we're not using those all the time. Like, it feels like we're bunching up so much that we could go around the outside of this. We could swim quickly through it and get out the other side. Um, it's it's taking us a really long time to deal with that. Yeah. Okay, so they're starting to move in. We're one down. Um, and we really need to be careful not to stagger here, so we don't want to be staying in. Um, this is not a stand your ground kind of moment. Uh, this is a either win a fight cleanly very quickly or give up a little bit of space yeah. situation. Yeah. Those are your two options when you've got a, a one down like this. Also, uh, oh, let's continue. I was just going to say, they're so deep right now that your escape route is compromised. And at this point, you're either jumping out or you're actually pushing forward to try and go after the explode and the heavy. Those are... We've, we've let those two just get through mid for free without responding at all defensively. Like, we've even moved further forward since they've started flanking us. So we don't have the option to retreat anymore. We either need to commit harder or get just get the heck out of there. You know, hit the, yeah. hit, the <laughs> hit the escape button. You were going to say? Uh, so so uh, actually experienced Riff on my controller here. But you're, you're probably gonna see here. So I was just standing in, in a meeting, unfortunately. I'm gonna get a new controller, but yeah, 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 see, look. No. <laughs> yeah, I know, doing the practice session. The drift. It was, and then I died for it, oh well. Yeah, yeah. I Yeah. Um, one of the things that I think um, is a, a bigger difference between like mid-level and low-level play is how quickly teams will recognize uh, a disadvantage state, like, and how well they'll respond to that. Um, you'll start to hear teams recognizing that they're, like, one player down, and that will immediately cause a macro scale shift in the team's movement. Um, when we go one down here, it doesn't feel like we have the sense of tension that would be appropriate for okay we really need to be careful like at any trade that we take is going to put make our position worse um any ground that we give up like any escape route that we give up i should say um is making it very a very real risk that we go further down we stagger we wipe um and it feels like here we kind of just let the, the walls close in around us without ever recognizing that anything's going wrong. Um, yeah. So when someone goes down, first of all, as an individual, this changes your risk-reward consideration dramatically. Because in a, a neutral situation, if you trade one for one, now it's 3v3. Now it's even. If you're in a 4v3 situation... There is a ticking clock after which you're going to be back in a 4v4. But if you go down, even if you take someone else out with you, 
now you've added another 10 seconds to the clock from the moment that you went down. Where now we're going to be in this disadvantage state for longer. So it makes it so that the only fights that you should ever be willing to take are fights where you're sure you're going to win and fights where you know where everybody is so there's not going to be any random other player that's going to third party you all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we kind of just stayed in and let them run at us here, which is why this opening fight goes so poorly and we're going to get pushed back so hard. Then after this, it's also really important to recognize that we do not have control of the space that we are pushing into right now. Like, Ellie is in an island of blue ink. There is orange ink behind her where she would want to move back into. Sorry if I'm getting your pronouns wrong there. Oh, she, her, it's fine. She, her, okay. Um, the, uh, the orange ink there should be a red flag. Like, we're outnumbered and I'm pushing into enemy ink. Like, alarm bells should be going off there that this isn't safe. Um, and this player does end up, like, being able to see her in part because she's pushing into so much enemy ink. Because that blue is going to contrast the rest of the orange really visibly. And so it's going to be easier to spot them. Yeah. Um, so 52 hops out, gets into range. Like, you can't outrange them here because they're right on top of you. They have a faster kill time. It's just a very winnable fight for them. Um, and now it's going to take another 10 seconds or so before the team can regroup. Um, this is the, the feed stagger loop. This is, we are at a disadvantage and we're perpetuating that disadvantage by continuing to take fights before we have all of our members back. We're not regrouping all the way before we put ourselves into dangerous positions. That could be caused by a number of different factors. That could be an overwillingness to take aggressive plays at disadvantage. That could be not recognizing we're at a disadvantage. That could be that we're aware of the feed stagger loop and we're trying not to, you know, perpetuate it here, but that we're not recognizing that the place we're moving into isn't safe, that we figure we're just playing safe and painting for special when in fact we're actually pushing into an engagement with the enemy team. Um, there are a lot of different things that could be going on there, and I would have to, you know, mind meld with you to figure out exactly what it is that's going on. But those are some ideas to consider and to think about, like, what is my thought process that led to this thing happening? What is that thought process distracting me from looking at that I need to be more aware of next time? Uh, oh, yeah. Do you want me to share? Um, it... You don't have to. That's something that I think, like, if you want some help with me to figure it out, um, to, like, say, oh, th so this thing is less useful, substitute it with this thing, you know. If you want that kind of feedback, I can provide that. Yeah. I don't need to hear it from you personally. I'm just giving you, like, here is where I would start to pick that apart and figure out how to not make that decision a second time. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I just want to I just want to add cuz something that I'm personally trying to work on cuz I've gone from custom junior to now picking up wiper and I've noticed I can be um, not as aggressive as I would like to. So I think in that moment I'm thinking to myself, I'm the wiper, I'm supposed to be aggressive and so then I make um, silly mistakes like that. And so I think that's my mindset when things like that happen, but I agree that um, I, I shouldn't be making plays like that, but I think that's kind of the mindset that I'm in at that, at that moment. If anybody ever tells you you're playing too aggressively or not aggressively enough, too passively, not, not passively enough, that's not useful feedback <laughs> because it's not actionable is the problem with that. Um, when you tell someone to play more aggressively, Inevitably, what's going to happen is they're going to feed. And when you tell someone to play more passively, inevitably what's going to happen is they are going to take a position where they have no impact on the game. That's always what happens when, like, I've never seen a situation where someone has been told that in those kinds of terms, and that sort of thing hasn't occurred as a result. Mm -hmm. What actually needs to happen is not that you need to play more aggressively, so much as 
you need to play aggressively when you have an advantage. And not that you need to play more passively, but that you need to play passively when you're at a disadvantage. And it's the awareness of those states and knowing what playing aggressively and what playing passively look like for your weapon that will get you to the right kind of decision-making trees. Um, so with the wiper, when you have an advantage, what you do is you use your range and you use your torpedo and you start to push forward into the enemy team and maybe you even dive them sometimes. Um, when, you, w when you have the custom junior and you have the advantage, you start painting further forward and you throw out torpedoes to make sure you're safe to be painting and you paint your teammates feet and stuff when they go in. Um, so you're still playing aggressively even in the situation where you're playing the C junior. And you're still playing passively sometimes even in situations where you're on the wiper. It's not so much that the weapon is determining how aggressively you play, it kind of does, but bear with me for a second. It's that the situation is what calls for whether you're playing aggressively or not. And the weapon, you know, will decide what aggression looks like. And some weapons will be able to pull off aggression in more spectacular ways. Tetra Dooley's diving the enemy team, etc. Um, but at the end of the day, what you need to be thinking, because you're, you know, you're in the game, you're playing the weapon already, um, you're not thinking do from a macro top-down level, do I need to be playing an aggressive role? You just play your weapon as best you can, and that means that you're going to have to be deciding, do we have the advantage that I can push? Um, that's more the way that I want you to think of it. Like, do we have an advantage? What can I get out of that advantage? Um, do, or if we're at disadvantage, how do I mitigate that until we have an advantage again? Um, and so here, what's happening is we're just in, I need to be aggressive mode, and we go in and be aggressive in a way that actually forces our team to play more passively afterward. Yeah. Um, so what we want to do here is go, okay, it's 2v4. I'm not going to win a fight if I take one right now, so I'm going to wait to take a fight until my teammates get in. And maybe taking a fight isn't your MO as the C junior, that you're more there to poke, collect information, paint, etc., get the special out. But whatever your plan is as a weapon, you still have to be both aggressive and passive and pick the right time to do either one. So, 3v4 situation, they've got the explo locking down the right-hand side and the heavy in the middle. One of the most important things to consider when you're rolling out is to figure out where the backliners are so that um, you know which areas you just aren't going to have range on, which areas you have to respect, which areas you're going to want to be throwing things at, and which areas you want to use your specials on. Um, once you can make one of those move, you've now created a temporary moment for your team to move through the area that they used to control and maybe get something done to attack the frontliners in the meantime. Or maybe you, that just lets you get on top of them or something. Um, so that's typically how you game plan to get in because those are the first things that are going to be in your way a lot of the time. Okay. So... We're a little bunched up, and that's just part of the, the map, unfortunately. That choke point there is yeah, dreadful, is. and I cannot Maybe. believe it. Anyway. The um, right. was better. Like, please, why? <laughs> um, but we do end up having specials, and we do a great job here of using those specials in a coordinated way to take space. Like, the inkjet goes out, and it's looking at the left-hand side, so where does the hammer get popped? It gets popped on the right-hand side. That's perfect. Now, if they go right, they're looking at an inkjet. If they go left, they're looking at a hammer. There's no way for them to exist in the space that they're at. They can't just sidestep it. They have to actually back up. And it's not even the fact that we get kills here, because, in fact, we, we only got one of them. And one of us is pretty far back right now. I, um, this feels pretty passive from the blaster, given that we're just hitting the go button right now. Um, I don't know, maybe the heavy was looking at you and it was keeping you zoned out. And if so, then that's perfect because that let you get the heavy and that was value. Um, 
But it's not even really the fact that we're getting picks is my point. It's that we're pushing the enemy team back. We're making it so that if they stay where they're at, they're in trouble. And that moves them away and that gets us the zone. So great job. We end up being able to collapse on someone there. And at this point, it's 4v2. At this point, we want to be hard pushing. We want to be cleaning up the rest of them. Every pick that we get for, get at this point, even if it's just a one-for-one -one trade, is, again, refreshing that kind of 10-second respawn timer that they have before they're going to have numbers and, get, and be able to push again. Um, so as long as we're even getting so much as a one-for-one -one trade right now, it's worth it. And even if we're setting up for our teammate to trade back for us, it's worth it. So I want eggs and... Is it Ray? Roker? Yeah. That's okay. Ray. Yeah. Ray? Okay. Yeah. Um, I want eggs. I want Ray. I want Ellie holding forward. I want them running these guys down and not letting them back up. Yeah, sounds good. Oh. So we do that, and this is where the standing on top of each other problem comes into play. Because if you guys take two different angles there, 52 can't get away with that. Um, but because we go in at exactly the same place, the 52 is, is just shooting at both of us at the same time. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in and see this from Ray's perspective. Because they were further back, and we'll be able to see more here. Nice. Right here. Um, so Ray is in here first. Eggs swing wider around this corner. Um, it is, it's not going to be okay to be right on top of your teammate. And they went in first, so find another angle to take this fight from. Um, hop over mid or swing further left or something. But as soon as you see that you're like right next to a teammate like that, like you're on the same line relative to the opponent, this is going to happen every time. Um, it's too easy for them to shift fire from one to the other. You guys might end up shot blocking each other depending on the weapons. Um, that uh, awareness of space around you is really important to maintain so that you're taking good fights and also keeping yourself safe. So that forces us to back up here. Waylord ends up getting picked off on the, on the returning jump. And again, I let... This is another time that we've had Waylord get picked off from being further forward. Um, yeah. As soon as players start going down, your your thought here is, I need to play my range against where that opponent is. So we want you backing up at that point. All right. All right. And at this point, Ellie probably sh should just jump out. Um, that, although I remember there was a really weird teleport that happened off of that ledge. Yeah, it was weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> it like, showed yeah. up on your screen, I was like, that doesn't really make physical sense. Yeah, like, like all of a sudden he was behind me and then in front of me, like, all right, whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. That code. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Not a bad use of the, the bubbler there. Gets a teammate to be able to jump in a little bit faster and also makes it so that they can't push quite as far. Although, again, we're all bunched up inside it. Um, you only want so many people in one place, even if they're in a big bubble, because for one thing, at one point that bubbler is going to get um, shredded. For another thing, even before it does, it's going to shrink. And when it does get shredded, then you guys are just all there in one place on low ground. Um, so we, w we want maybe the more aggressive players, the skirmishers, the flankers, to be taking positions outside the bubble and maybe getting up on the far right side, the far left side, excuse me, far left side. Um, maybe the, the backliner gets up onto to perch instead. We want the people who are trying to hold the front line to be in there, but not everybody. Because um, from here, the whales that the 52 are putting through threaten all of you. And as soon as anyone steps outside of that bubble, now the 52's got shots on you. Yeah, I think the whale gets one of us. Though. No. No, but it backs you up pretty far. And that was just one player. Like, nobody else even had range on you when you were in that position, except for the 52. But that forced the entire team back, and that's the danger of clumping up like that. Yeah. So now... Look at these positions. Look at how nice these look. <laughs> like, we just kind of intuitively moved into these positions because this is what actually keeps us safer. Got eggs poking around the right side. I want eggs calling this fight so that everybody else follows up on it. I want it to be known, like, 
that you're pushing the 52. Because if not, then this is a 1v1. One, one one. But if other people follow up on this, you know, with their comp being so backline heavy, they only have so many frontliners. This is, like I said, the only weapon that actually wants to push your team. And if you just look at this from the top down right here, we absolutely win this fight. We just need to know it's happening. And we don't have anybody else who's even looking at it at the time that it takes place. So it ends up being a one-for-one -one trade, even though it was literally a 4v1 engagement. Um, at this point, Ellie goes in. So we have two fights happening at the same time. Um, have you guys seen my video on um, coordination using Zero's callouts? Yeah. I have not. Maybe? No. I don't know. All right. I will go and grab that really quickly. Um, this is... Um, this is a video that I recommend to every team I coach that has not seen it. Um, sorry if there's a timestamp in there. I, I got the link from the YouTube main page and they look weird. No so. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Um, it's all good. But uh, one of the most important things to try and establish as a team is which fight you're taking at that moment in time. Because if you take two fights at once, you're always splitting your forces. And... If you, the enemy team doesn't split their forces and they put everybody on one of those fights and the one player that you're trying to fight on the other side just kind of stalls, wastes your time, backs up a little bit, you end up devoting... Let, let, let's say that it's like... The enemy team is focusing on one fight at a time. You guys are focusing on two fights at a time. So let's say you, you're split up optimally for this. So you have two players on one fight, two players on another fight. What the enemy team is going to do is they're going to put three players on the one fight and they're going to win that fight because it's a 3v2. The one player who's in the 1v2 is going to know that they're that's not a fight they win and they're not going to commit to it. They're going to back up. They're going to skirmish it. They're going to waste your time. They're going to stall you out. And then after their three players win the fight against your two, the players who are done with that are going to rotate over to help and now they're going to have an advantageous fight. Um... And that's kind of the way that it's going to work in Splatoon. Um, it's not like a, it's not like a game of Valorant where you move so slowly and you have such massive maps that you actually can't help every area of the map at one point in time, and you have to split your forces. In this game, especially in Splatoon 3, where the maps are just hallways, <laughs> everybody can be involved um, in any given fight at any point in time for the most part like there are some exceptions there are some positioning mistakes but if you're positioning optimally you should be able to rotate to where the fight is with enough time to get there and have some kind of impact on it unless like there's a stagger in place someone's gone down and is getting back in or something like that um so just focus on one fight at a time win one fight then win the next fight and use that momentum to build specials, use that momentum to take space. Here, we end up with the fight on the right and the fight on the left, and neither one of those fights is adequately supported. We lose both of them, and now we're yeah. gonna lose the zone for it. Um, and it's only the fact that we're able to jump people in and then win this next fight that we stay in the game at all. The actual comeback, though, like looking at these numbers, I'm like, yo, yeah. the eight. Yeah. <laughs> the eight seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I won't lie, I was worried you were going to lose this game at 90 seconds. Yeah, sure. yeah. No, yeah. yeah. It was entirely possible. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what's working for you guys is the special pushes. Um, when you guys get a special push ready and actually regroup and put yourselves in a position to start one, it tends to succeed. Now, as time goes on, that strategy will actually change a little bit. Because um, what, what happens um, when f teams first start to get coordinated is they just use everything at once. And all of the resources are on the table right now. And the way to counter that is as soon as everyone starts blowing their specials, you just back up. You don't contest the specials at all. You let the specials run out. You avoid, you skirmish, you dodge, you hide. And then 
once all of the resources are done, you know they don't have any specials anymore, and now you pop yours. And then the enemy team is committed. They just used all these specials. They have to take space with them. Otherwise, they just wasted all these specials. So you're probably out in front of the zone, but now you're facing down an inkjet. Now you're facing down a crab tank. And that's when people tend to get wiped. Um, so at top level, what you're going to see is you're going to have one or maybe two, usually just one key specials that they want to start the play off with. Um, and whoever has those specials is going to farm for them as quickly as they possibly can. They're going to have them in literally like 10 seconds flat. And then they'll use that one special to get a fight started before anybody else has momentum. And successive specials will be used to counter the enemy team when they try to commit to something. Um, those new specials are there as like, okay, we popped an inkjet, they popped a crab in response, I'm going to try strike that crab. And so now you've got an inkjet that goes off, and a few seconds later you've got the tri strikes that go off, and then a few seconds later you've got a booyah bomb that goes out or something, and by the time you get to the last special, it's not too long until you have your inkjet again, if they've all stayed alive. And you can actually kind of keep this cycle going and build this momentum so that you're moving forward efficiently the whole time. And this is how top teams make it into your base in lockout situations. It's that they just have the resources to get themselves there because they've been conserving them a little bit more as they move forward. Um, so if you ever find yourself in positions where you feel like you're blowing all your specials, you're taking the zone, and then it's immediately getting taken back from you, what's probably happening is that you're just using all of your resources all at once and not staggering them quite as well so that you're getting control for a very short time and not being able to hold it. Yes. Um, that makes sense. So here, the reason that is it works is that we get a lot of value out of the specials that we put out there. Like, someone goes down right away, I don't know if that was a bomb or what, um, but then the inkjet goes out and catches someone in rotation, um, you know, forces them into the, the hammer there, and now all they've got are backline weapons. So we're going to be able to sweep in and finish all of this off. Um, okay. And even if we trade there one for one, that's totally fine. Like, that is a perfectly acceptable death for eggs to take. Probably could have, like, maybe dodged away somewhere a little bit more committally. Like, just know, okay, Ray has got this. All I need to do is survive and get out of there kind of thing. Um, but, like, the end state that we have here is it's 3v0. We won this very decisively. And so now we just take their snipe area, we paint out in front of it, and we make sure we have specials. And as soon as they pop specials or start dropping down, we're immediately popping our specials to counter that momentum they're trying to create. Um, we don't want to go in and just like use our main weapon and die. We don't want to contest their high ground. We're as far forward as we really need to be for the rest of the game. Um, what we could do in theory, if we get like a massive wipe, is maybe jump into their spawn and start taking those kinds of positions. But that's a, we got two wipes in a row kind of play. That's something that you're probably not going to get against evenly matched teams. That's something that you get when, well, I mean, we've got the opportunity, let's go for it. Um, it's an opportunistic thing. Most of the time, right about, like, you, you take maybe, like, a weapons range that you step further forward for all of you right now, and that's all you have to take to be able to win the game from here. This is That's all you need to lock out. Because they have high ground, but in order to get to the zone, they have to drop out of that high ground. And it's when they drop out that you really want to catch them. Um, if they try to use specials from way back on the high ground, then you back up a tiny little bit and you're still out in front of the zone and they're, you're still in their way. And their special hasn't accomplished much. So... Uh, Ellie going in here is risky. It's not necessarily a bad idea. Um, if we get like a pick here and Ellie can get out safely or we can get two picks and Ellie goes down, then it's worth it. Um, 
but we want to make sure that like we've got some crossfire for Ellie. Um, so Waylord's doing a good job of uh, keeping an eye on that. I want Ray a little further forward. Um, I want Ray like underneath a ledge or something like that, because from this position, you literally can't hit anything. Um, we just splatted the entire enemy team. Yeah. So we want you to get into a position where you'll be able to hit something at some point. Um, and from here, like, this is, this is the kind of positioning, I wouldn't even recommend that positioning for like, maybe an E-leader. That's maybe like an E-leader position on this map. Um, so that you can see up and like hit their perch or something. But you're so far back that you're out of play and you're also on the zone. So if they were to randomly just get a splat on you for, somehow, um, you just miss a bomb or something, now you're painting the zone with getting splatted. Um, yeah. You've got enough paint out in front of you, go shark in that somewhere and find a spot where they're not going to be looking to hit them over a ledge from. Yeah, it sounds good. I was already focused on autobombs. <laughs> Because I honestly think that Ellie's positioning here isn't bad. I just think that it's not supported enough. That we have the rest of the team up, but they're putting themselves in positions where they can't help Ellie. We should be able to control their snipe without a problem from here. Um, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, can you see my mouse? I don't know if you can see it or not. No, mm. I'm not able to no. see your mouse. No, okay. I think, it, I think you can only see it when it's a, a, a web browser, so that makes sense. Um, but like... If you'll look at the, the geometry closely, there is like a wall between Waylord and Ray and Ellie. Mm -hmm. Like they cannot shoot to try and help Ellie because there's cover in the way. And if we're up on top of the area, the, uh, up on top of that wall, then we can trade that back. We're kind of cutting our own sight lines without needing to, without being threatened. Nothing scared us out of that position we just decided to back up and that we need to not do that because uh, we can hold ground from there better than we can from on the zone where we are. Yeah. So, um, I don't think Ellie's positioning is bad at all. I think if like Waylord is up there, if Ray is up there, if Ray is like in the mix with her, that this is a fight you guys can absolutely win because you had the numbers advantage at the time that this got initiated, but we just sort of backed up from it and let Ellie go down. Uh, and Waylord is frontlining right now. Yeah. Um, this this yeah, is. I, I didn't work on that. I, I realize that now. After you play it out. Okay. So we do get one, which works out. Uh, Ellie just with an unfortunate jump there. I probably wouldn't jump to that position. Um, it looks safe on the map, probably. Like let's let's take a look at where Ellie actually spawns back in here. Uh, I backed up way too far. Zip forward a little bit. Okay, so Ellie's down, and it's right here that Ellie respawns. So. Oh, this no. probably looks like a safe jump from Ellie's perspective at the moment because there's a whole bunch of blue ink around. Yeah. And it seems like Waylord is behind cover. The problem is that the enemy team has momentum. They're starting to push forward. They've had an advantage and they're on the aggressive. Mm -hmm. So the amount of space that your team controls now is not the same as the amount of space that they're going to control by the time you land. So here, I think, is where the problem comes in, that we land, you know, in space that we used to control, but now we no longer control it. Yeah. And that's when all of the bad stuff happens. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's when you get hit by three things at the same time. I was watching that and I was like, yeah, okay, Ellie's just absolutely dead. Yeah, like, yeah I think I said at the time that her jump might have been dead as yeah, well. <laughs> it was unfortunate. Yeah. Just super omega dead. Yeah. Um, Waylord, you're staying in the ink storm for too long there. You want to circumnavigate that out to either your team's right or by backing further up. Um, you you want to be getting through the rain in a way that lets you keep your range against the enemy team. Um, is like, 
if if you get get out of the rain, but do so in a way that puts you in striking distance of the 52 gal, you haven't made yourself safer. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of what ends up happening here. We kind of take a halfway between getting through the the, the rain and um, so that we can put ourselves in the 52 gals range and oh. staying in the rain. So I, I'm surprised we don't go down to that. But um, the 52, like, they're doing their job here. Like, they're being really aggressive. That's what they need to do because nothing else on their team comp is going to help them with that. And um, they're forcing you guys off of your snipe by themselves, which is something that uh, if they had the numbers up to help with, they might be able to get something out of. But you guys are going to be able to kite that yeah, back and, and beat them here. Well. Yeah. But think about what happens if there's even one other enemy player following up on that play. Think about what happens if the explodes in range. Think about what happens if the forge is pushing the right hand side. That becomes a big problem for you guys. So we want to be watching that right hand side since this is the second time now that the uh, 52 has gotten big value from being up there. Um, we want to be cutting that off before they get the opportunity. We want to be not letting them get up there and then dealing with it, but we want to be pre-painting the spots that they're going to have to move through to get there so that when they do try to move into that position, they have to put paint on the ground and you guys see them coming because it takes so much longer and it's so more visible that they do that. So they end up getting a one-for-one -one trade out of, again, what was literally a 1v4. Um, and that, I think, again, is... Uh, Waylord being in a more of a frontline position than is safe for them. Um, yeah. So just once again, play your range. Like, if they're shooting at you, just remember that they're not shooting at your teammates. And the, the root of all teamwork is shoot a guy who's shooting at your teammate. So, yeah, yeah and I just trust at that point that they're well. going to... What was that? I was in ink chat here as well. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to see from the top down. Uh, what happens here? Okay, so we're in the bubble. We're starting to move up. Oh, I, I stepped out of the, the bubble cap. stupidly. I remember feeling like I, I was like right outside of the bubble. <laughs> oh. Gotcha. So Ellie gets picked. Um, Eggs is in, and there's not... Okay, so I guess the idea was that Eggs was going to move around the left side and Ellie was going to push right. They were going to meet in the middle. Um, but then Ellie goes down and Eggs is alone. Um, I don't... I don't remember this fight being called, and maybe it was. Um, I'd have to, you know, have recorded it to remember. But uh, it's important here that if we're going to, like, push around the back side of the zone, that we call that that's happening. Because it looks like Ray and Whale Lord just kind of don't know that this is going on. Or, like, weren't in position to be ready to help with it. Um, yeah, I just respond. I think another part of this is the, the problem that we're all stacked on top of each other. Um, because, like, yes, we've got the big bubbler that's allowing us to be there safely. But that also means that the enemy team can see all of us. They know where all of us are. So when any of us leave the bubble, they only have to watch the bubble. They don't have to watch the right side. They don't have to watch the left side. They can just watch dead ahead at the bubble, and they know where everybody's going to be coming from, and they can deal with that as it comes. So I think if someone were to be outside the bubble poking around like the right hand side and then someone else used the bubble to come in then that person on the right hand side would draw attention and the person coming through the bubble would be safe up until the point that they can take a good fight um so again that's just spreading out a little bit more uh, yeah yeah it's good all right ellie's making a play on the right side here so we want somebody else pushing up into mid to help ellie with this okay ellie can only stay there alive for so long especially against something that ranges her that badly so we want maybe ray going up and going after that heavy or we want like waylord stepping forward and starting to control some space and threatening the heavy out of place or threatening the inkjet or something like we want to make it so that um 
there's pressure from multiple angles at the same time. Because here, it, like, Ellie actually ends up dropping back and going in with the rest of the team when we start to push in. If Ellie keeps the pressure up on the right-hand side, I don't think Ray even goes down here, because the 52 has to be looking at Ellie instead. But, again, we use all of our resources, and a, a part of the reason that this is so successful is that we get good value out of those resources. Um, and part of the reason that it's successful is that we are at least putting the two specials in on opposite sides of the zone. We could put them in from even more extreme angles and make it even more difficult to deal with the two of them at the same time, but like what we're doing is painting the zone and getting them off the zone. And so that's definitely working and we want to keep up that idea of if someone uses a special here, I use a special here and they have no space to work with anymore. I have a question. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, so I'm yeah, I think Thanks for pointing out that we tend to stack on top of each other. I think that's something that I yeah, personally yeah, have yeah, never, never really noticed. So that's really helpful for me to know. Um, and I know you had mentioned earlier that myself and Ray, at least in this particular instance, would be really good to be on those like hallway areas. And so for me, I'm thinking about like our overall comp and like different situations and like how we could best coordinate those um, like effectively like using the quote unquote flanks better um like who's going to what area if that if that makes sense like i'm i'm wondering like who would go with me um often and if it's like comp dependent or like just situation dependent unfortunately this is the most difficult question in splatoon um, <laughs> this this is all right, all right this all right. is the question of uh how oops uh, this is the question of how do you build a team and what should that team's game plan be? Because mm -hmm. um, this is very weapon dependent. Yeah. This is also very comp dependent. Um, I'm going to share a different screen here real quick. What you do to figure this out is you go to a beautiful yeah. website called sendu.inc slash plans. <laughs> and you pull your zap you pull your V blaster, get your splatling. Wait, that's the uh, wrong splatling. This splatling, go away. <laughs> uh, and you get your wiper. Ah, I hate how scrolling works on this thing sometimes. Uh, let's put that here and then scroll up there. Okay. And then. You gather everybody around the campfire and you go, okay, which positions do you guys like on this map? And so Ballpoint goes, I really like this position up here because it lets me completely cover this right-hand side and still paint the zone. Um, and nobody else is actually able to accomplish all of those things from that position. So we're like, yeah, cool. Makes sense to put the ballpoint right here. And then the wiper goes, I really like flanking this route. Or the blaster goes, I really like flanking this route. I get a lot of value out of this when I tr take this route in solo queue. So we go, okay, we'll put the blaster up here. So if the blaster's over there and the ball point's over here, we need someone to be able to support the blaster. Who's better to support the blaster? Probably the wiper, because if they're right here, they can be throwing torpedoes up over the top. They can pinch anyone around the side. And they're not too close to this player. Like if this player has to back up, they're not going to be like stuck right on top of them because they can just move out into mid or they can back up into this direction to, to make room for them. So this is good. This is letting the, letting things breathe, but also giving support when support is needed. And then we have the zap back here, which has access to a lot of area that it can paint the map. It's going to have access to the zone as long as that area in front of it is safe, and it should be if there's a ball point installed. It has a good angle to defend the ball point from a flank if somebody is coming in from this direction, and it's a short range shooter, so it's going to be well equipped to be able to handle that situation. The wiper, if it really needs to, can also look this way and have a good angle across. Okay, I think we've found our positioning. You do that for every single weapon comp on every single map mode, and it's going to be different for every single one of those things. Yeah, it's a very complicated and. And here's the thing, we've only actually figured out one third of our game plan here. This is how we want to play the neutral game. But this isn't how we want to play retake, and this isn't how we want to play actually pushing out of here. Um, so what we want to do when we're going aggressive, 
well, we probably want to lead that off with an inkjet. That's usually how things are going. And then the hammer can flank around and we wait until we've got a cooler to do that so that if we die, we just jump right back in. And then the bubble gets used as selfishly as the blaster can possibly think to use it so that they can get into good positions and make people go boom. <laughs> so that's kind of the, 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 the plan there. But then when we get up here, we probably want like ballpoint up here because this is a high ground position that lets them see a lot of things and it's difficult to contest them and they've got high ground to use the inkjet from. Then to, do we want the blaster underneath here so they can hit people up over the over the top? or under here so they can hit people over here? Do we want them under here so they can hit people who are trying to come up over here? Wiper's probably gonna be in this area somewhere and they can back up to here as far, like this far and skirmish the whole time while they wait for their teammates to support and then maybe zap hereabouts. And this is probably what we're looking at. So like those conversations are difficult to have, especially at first because they depend heavily on your game knowledge. And game knowledge is something that is often only really going to be informed by either you playing the game and figuring out what positions work for you, or by watching somebody else play the game and taking note of what positions are working well and not working well for them. And you're only really going to have that kind of knowledge at a, you know, as strong a level as possible on your weapon a lot of the time. Like, if you're going out of your way to learn that positioning for other weapons, now you're becoming an analyst. You're not, you know, acting as a player anymore. You're going to extra effort to figure out what your teammates need to be doing. Um, and that's not something that's easy to learn through experience because you're not as well versed on your weapon as your teammates are on theirs. So that's why it's difficult because it involves a conversation. It involves everyone sharing the information that they have about what they want to do figuring out compromises that work between all of those weapons and then learning to execute those consistently together. This is helpful. Yeah. This is helpful yeah. because, yeah, the reason okay. why I asked was because I assumed it would be a more complicated answer. Um, and I know you had mentioned earlier about, like, me and Ray being on the flank, and I'm like, should that be the default? But, yeah, I think that this is really helpful. Uh, yeah, thanks for pointing this out. It, it really is. And uh, one thing that you also want to bear in mind, besides just here are our discrete three plans for retake, um, neutral, and lockout, is what's the path that I take to get from one to the other? Um, like once, like you're over here, right? And Blaster's over here. You can only plan so much, because like, you don't know what the enemy team's gonna do, and fights are gonna happen, and things are going to go wrong. They always go wrong. This is the rule of Splatoon. Like, FLC says this himself. The, the only consistent rule in Splatoon is that everything is always going wrong. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's Murphy's Law. It's distilled into squid form. But or at Octo. some point, fight is going to happen, and during whatever fight happens, you want to have in the back of your mind that the place you want to end up is here. That this is the ultimate goal. And what that's going to do is, in the micro game of figuring out how best to play this fight to win it, you're also, like, as soon as you win that fight, as soon as that fight is done, you're moving in this direction. And even during that fight, like, sometimes if I know that a fight, it, like, there's, let's say, someone right here, and they're out of range of me and I'm strafing them and they have nowhere to go. Like, I could strafe them in this direction and get them down, but I know that I want to end up here. And so I'm going to strafe in this direction while I splat them. And then I'm already halfway to my objective. Um, so knowing not just where you are now and what the plan is now, but also where you want to end up makes it so that you can move more smoothly and efficiently to that position and now you're already set and ready to go as provided that the rest of the team is there to support you. Because like we, we talked about earlier, if your team is here, this is not a safe place to be because there's nobody there to protect you. And you always want, a, as an, a skirmisher especially, like, you know, a weapon that doesn't have a very good kill time but is good at keep you, keeping people's attention on you, you always need an escape route. And the escape route here is kind of slow, so you need to be getting to this block pretty quickly if your goal is to get back and be able to stand here and back up. Uh, otherwise, you're getting behind this wall and you're super jumping out. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
hopefully that gave you some insight into the process. Um, yeah, yeah it was really informative. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Thank you. Really yeah. Awesome. Um, unfortunately, there are a lot of map boats. Yeah, there are. <laughs> so, and you also have an extra member on your team. Yeah. So, this comp, you know, we've got a game plan for Barnacle and Dime Splat Zones. Cool. But if you don't play Barnacle and Dime Splat Zones in tournament, then this isn't that helpful. Right. And if you're playing a different roster, this isn't that helpful. Um, you, you, because you have five players and none of those players are like substitutes for the other, none of those are playing the same role. Mm -hmm. You don't have one team comp, you have five team comps. And so if we were to take, say the wiper out and replace it with someone who plays Tentabrella, now, this is a completely different game plan. Yeah. And we've got to be a lot more cognizant of what the Brella wants to do, because it's very slow. And there are certain positions it really wants to take. Like, this is probably the place that it wants to be playing, or this. Probably this, actually. It probably wants to drop out right and take the enemy team's side over here. And since we're playing around the right-hand side, that means that now the play is going to be here. This play on the left is a little bit more risky. Um, and we need to figure out something for the blaster to do in all of this. Um, we also, so maybe it looks a little bit more like this sort of thing with the blaster, like guarding the flank or like making sure nobody can get up on top of it. Maybe we do it like this and try and find a, an angle the blaster likes. Like that becomes a lot more complicated. Right. So. And we tend to, that's not all of us hmm? play the same weapon either. Like. I would say we all have at right. least like one other weapon that we would um, potentially swap out for. And you want to account for that before you start making game plans, just so that like y you go like, hey, would you play this or this on this map? Which of those would you prefer? Yeah. Um, or if you find like there's a hole in the team comp, you're like, man, I just don't know. Because like, I know you want to be over here, but like we, we need to play around the right hand side to help with the tent. Um, actually, you know what? <laughs> This is a bad example because this is actually a thing people do. People play uh, V Blaster and run it right behind a tent umbrella. And so what you would actually be doing is just running these two in one on top of the other. So the blaster can take as many free shots as they want from behind the shield. Um, and then the rest of the team follows up behind. So it probably looks something like this. And we just want to make sure that the end zap is, is protected as it tries to paint the zone, and then you're probably good. Biped, That's probably how you would run this, but... Biped plays Machine and uh, Octobrush right now. Gotcha. Um, but... The, the whole point is just to say that... Yeah. This is a lot of planning that it's going to take. Yeah. And this is why, like, it takes so long for a team to come into their own, because even if they have this idea to game plan in this way, they still have so many maps to learn um and when you actually want to like take these and practice them and then apply them in tournament what's going to happen inevitably is you're going to come up with some idea that's just doesn't work doesn't work at all um it was based on faulty assumptions it was based on people shrugging and going i don't know sure sounds good to me um and then you go in and play in the tournament and you realize that Oh god, that plan sucked. We all died immediately. Oh, yeah. Something went terribly wrong. Let's see what we thought was going to happen and what is actually going to happen and iterate on this and do it better next time. Um, and uh, sometimes it's not the game plan that's the problem, which only complicates things further because it, there are often a lot of times where you, you come up to a coach and you go, hey, what was wrong with our game plan? And they go, there was nothing wrong with your game plan. You just didn't execute it effectively. Or like they, they mechanically outplayed you. This is a fight right here where you had an advantage and it was good fight for you guys to take. And they just won it because they were better at moving and shooting than you were. So the plan is fine. And what you work on is something different. Um, so after like tournaments, especially close losses, you want to look at like, what were the variables that were actually involved here? Was this that the game plan didn't work? Was this that individual players were making mistakes? Um, what kind of awareness do we need to build? What kind of skills do we need to build to get this better next time? Um, 
And again, very, very complex process. Lots and lots and lots of things to keep in mind. Not, not you know, the kind of thing that I can teach in two hours, of but course, yeah. hopefully this gives yeah. you a sense of yeah. what the process looks like at the very least. Could you, yeah. could you remind <laughs> me again of like, so you had mentioned like that's just starting off at neutral and that like we should also have game plans for like, X, Y, and Z, what would you, what, what is it that you would I say? think of uh, three different situations. There's the neutral game slash the rollout. This is, we are all four up and we are racing to the middle of the map against the enemy team who's doing the same thing. And so we will be uncontested on the way there. Mm -hmm. So that's how we're going to roll out. Then there's what do we do on defense? Uh, because there's typically a defensive position that a team will end up in. On this map, it is roughly this area. Um, if the attacking team pushes further than this on their first wipe, they probably get punished and die for that because there's just high ground here, high ground here, high ground here, high ground here. Like, you have a defensive advantage if they try to push this far unless they are able to clear this choke point right here. Like. If they're able to get through this dead zone right here and start taking like these kinds of positions on you, then you are you have to play from further back. You have to play from back here. But most of the time that will never happen off of just a single uh, wipe. Like if that's happening to you, you are probably playing against some of the absolute best players in the world and oh. you're just getting absolutely rolled. Um, <laughs> That, that sort of thing doesn't happen against evenly matched teams. So typically what's going to happen is you're going to be able to take maybe a position down here, a couple positions up here, um, figure out, you know, where the last person has to go, maybe hereabouts. And the enemy team is going to take positions here, here, maybe up as far as here. Um, and you have to figure out how you're going to get them off of this, which is the major choke point of the map. This is the most important area of the map to control to be able to lock out the enemy team away from the zone. If they have control of your snipe, then your team is locked out. And if you have control of their snipe, then their team is locked out. If you're each in control of your own snipes, then it's neutral. That's the way that I define this map. I think that this is the, the central defining choke point. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so, sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask. And then what was the third one? So you said neutral, rollout, defense. And then what would the third one be? New, so rollout and neutral are basically the same because that's ah, about okay. the only time you're ever going to be in a neutral state. Understood. Um, the, new, the neutral game is a term that we steal from fighting games. And the problem with stealing them from fighting games is that in a 4v4 team game, you're almost never actually in neutral. Usually there's some kind of advantage somewhere and you just have to figure out where it is. Uh, in a fighting game, if both characters are in their idle animations standing a certain distance apart from each other, it's just the neutral game. Um, is there like a name? And even that is probably oversimplifying it. Sorry? No, I apologize. I was, I was just gonna ask, is there also like a, a scenario where, like say for example, we, we get a wipe on, on the opponent? Right, so... What I was saying there was that the three that you've listed are actually two I see. in my system of thinking. I see, okay. So there's neutral slash rollout, which is one thing. There's defense, and then there's lockout. Lockout, understood, um, understood. And so on lockout, we're thinking, we have won a fight in mid, we've gotten control of the zone. Because we are a, a coordinated competitive team, we're gonna be able to move fast and efficiently enough that we are in control of this area off of that one fight win. We're clearing them out of there with all possible speed so that we can use this as our foundation for stopping them from getting back in. So knowing that like, if we control this, they cannot safely approach. How do we best put ourselves in a position to control this? Yeah. Um, that, that's that's what uh, map knowledge really kind of boils down to. It's where are the choke points? Where are the points where if we can control this and keep them out of there, make it so that as they approach this, they're getting shot at. Where are the points where if we manage to do that, that they don't have any other way in and they have to use brute force to get through us? Um, and then how do we protect those as optimally as possible with the resources that we have? 
Uh, and also a clarifying question that I have mm -hmm. is like something that's running through my mind is like to what level of like granularity should we be focused on this kind of question because for me like I'm thinking okay yeah we're thinking about our placements but uh, we like from our comp perspective we like we're not really taking into consideration what the opponent's composition would be when we're when we're putting these out and so like do we need to run play-by-plays depending on like what enemy comp would be as well because like that just sounds like yeah that will take years just get real yeah exactly oh, okay. exactly <laughs> no that's what i mean that's what i mean so the reason that the pl like the plans have been very loose so far um because like let, let's think about what it was we said on the rollout again real quick and just run through how granular it ha has been thus far um it's been we w we want the blaster poking around over here that's because they tend to run backline weapons that will tend to like to be up here. That's why we put our bolt point over here, after all. Um, and so if you go here, then maybe you've got good aggressive plays on them. Now, I'm not a blaster player. Maybe you try this game plan out, you run the blaster over here, and they just die every time because they're getting like outranged by something. They don't have enough cover. They can't paint their feet well enough to stay here safely. Maybe you need to put the wiper through here because it can f paint its feet faster and it's the blaster who follows up after the wiper has their attention. Maybe that's the way that this has to work. And so you try one of these plans out and you figure out what works and what doesn't in those given situations. Um, one great way to test a game plan is to take it into open because open is going to give you the same two map modes over and over again. So you spend an hour or something before that um, map mode being in rotation, planning for both of those map modes, then you go into open and test those plans and see if they are working and try to iterate on them by doing that against a whole bunch of different team comps. Cause you're gonna run into all sorts of different things that way. Um, and yeah. then maybe you learn from that Okay, hey, so guys, uh, me going left here isn't actually working. Um, I need to go someplace else. And so then you decide how else that you want to pressure this left-hand side. Because you probably still want to pressure this left-hand side. It's too good of an opportunity not to, to pass up. Maybe you try to put someone through the right-hand side instead, and that's maybe a little better. Depends. Um, and maybe you rotate back and forth. Maybe in the middle of the same game, like you roll out here, but then you're like... On the next time that you're trying to push back into mid, you push out on the right side because you don't want to be predictable. So it's a starting point. It gives your team a rough idea of what you're going to do. But you listen to like a top team or a pickup. Usually a lot of this stuff they're calling on the fly. Usually a lot of the time they're like, um, so I'm going to roll out left and get special. Don't die until I've got the special out. And they go, okay, yeah, I'm going to go this way then. And they, they build out the, like a rollout game plan in the 10 seconds that they're spending on the opening animation at the beginning of the game. Um, that's something that it, it becomes a really valuable thing to be able to do when you play in more pickups. Um, so maybe one, when you guys are a free agent sometime, like that, that skill will help you to be able to do that quickly instead of having to plan it with a full team. But I think it's good to practice in a full team in this more sort of like a uh, planned out structured environment at first to get the hang of it so that you can then start speeding it up and have these sort of rough game plans and be able to adapt to them when you see enemy comps because that's the ultimate goal that yeah. um a lot of the time like i won't have a game plan until um, when I'm playing with Devi, Devi sees what the enemy backliner is and she goes oh in order to play against that i need to go here and I have a couple of different game plans in mind where it's like, okay, so normally I would be rushing the left side, but Devi is going to not paint this area and just walk out this way and show up here with nobody knowing she's here and already have charge and have an angle that the enemy backliner can't see. And then she's just gonna shred people. And all I need to do is get their attention on the right-hand side in order to make that happen. This is probably not a play that actually works, but this is something we've done on Piranha Pit before. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, this was helpful. So Thank like, you. Um, a couple of different game plans um, should be you should at least have like a couple of different theories of what would work the best for your weapon 
And then when somebody else tells you, here's what I want to do, then you plug in the alternative game plan that works with their game plan, and that's how you compromise. But you have all of these different game plans so that if something's not working, you have a, a couple of different ideas to shift to. Great. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. I appreciate yeah. it. All right. Um, so let's see what is in open right now. Um, oh, well, it tells me that the map mode's updated, it's even though they didn't. Uh, haggle flounder. Yeah. Our haggle flounder? Uh, no, rainmaker. Rainmaker. Yeah. Yeah, it, it cut out. All I heard was the er. <laughs> oh, no worries, no worries. Okay. Um, so we probably don't have time to, to like fully game plan this, um, but what I think could be valuable, uh, we probably have enough time for like four matches. Okay. And what yeah. I want to do with that is I want to play with you guys and sub in for each individual one of you, one game at a time. So right. you, you guys will just rotate out for me and I'll play in your role and be like um, broadcasting what I'm doing there. Uh, and we'll work on the coordination and the game planning as we like go into it and how we execute on those. And maybe we can work on some of the uh, mechanical stuff as well while we're in the process. That sounds good. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna go and... I can tell. I'll make a pool here, and the pool's gonna be called. Uh, oh, wait a minute, Z's. that's too many. That's too many to count. Uh, oh. Six Z's. Six Z's, okay. okay. Wait, I'm already in pool, All right? And then the password is going to be all sevens. All right. Uh, so, sorry, I, I don't know you guys by voices yet. Who is it that's sitting out? Uh, I'll sit out. Uh, me, Whale. Here, actually, Whale, okay. Whale so, um, uh, I'll you're... sit out first, actually. I have to go grab some water, so I'll sit out first. But I'm still listening. Okay. I'll just be one Where, Are you... What weapon, what weapon should I play to represent you on these maps? To represent myself or Whale? Uh, I'm assuming you're the one who's sitting out because you're grabbing yeah, something. Yeah, uh, so um, Vanilla Wiper. Vanilla Wiper, okay. You got it. Do you need to know, like, my gear or anything, or...? Not really. I'll, I'll play what I've got. All right, no worries. Okay, um, I'll be right back. I'm still listening, though. Okay. Yeah, all right, hold on. Wait, was it six Zs or seven? Six. Oh, six okay. Zs. And then the pass was uh, six sevens, right? Yeah. No, all sevens. All sevens, yeah. Just bottom left side of the keyboard. All right. Did you start a room? Oh, I didn't see the note. Yes, I did. All right, let me check. I can put out an invite if, if need be. Yeah, eggs yeah, made yeah. it in, though. You I should did. be able to join off eggs. OK, I should be here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, you. All right. Oh, oh my gosh, it's taking forever to join. Hey. All right. All right. So we'll we'll wait and see which of the maps we get, and then we'll talk about the rollout real quick. All right. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. I'll try and speak up a bit more. <laughs> I'm just a little. Okay. Alrighty, I'm back. Welcome back. I'm back. I'm dead. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> well. no. Okay, uh, Flounder. I'm gonna take the. Um, do you want to take the bottom right, Ray, or should I? Uh, I'll take it. Okay. Um, I'll just play around mid and try to skirmish from there. Uh, watch out for opportunities to inkjet. 
and yeah. we'll see what we can get with uh, between Ray and I. Yep. Good luck, guys. I'll stay up here. I don't. Uh, we're not gonna get pops. We have a blaster. We probably should never expect to. Oh, right. Amber's looking at me. I'm trying to get well, Charger's maybe. attention, but there's someone in the way. I'm down no, on the machine. We're two down, back oh, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah dooley, dooley. No back. Play safe, play safe. Get out of their way, Lord. I'm trying. I'm waiting. Let me jump. Okay, there we go. I'm jumping out. Just, I have uh, cooler by. All right. All right. Uh, get first check. Either. Get first check. They get that for free. Uh, right. I'm gonna try and. Um, I shouldn't have pushed up. Down there is DNF. Watch out for Booyah and Crab. Yeah. Is that Booyah incoming? Oh, they're behind. Crab is out on top right. Oh, wait, they dropped it. Oh, I didn't expect that. Okay, Whoa. I'm in the bubble. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have any specials anymore, and they had never actually picked up, so... Okay, we, nice. Just... <laughs> nice, nice. we just do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pushing this guy up behind so, the... Yeah, yeah, There's awesome two behind the Rainmaker. Got him. Nice, nice. Move forward, move forward, take space. Oh, I okay. did not mean to pick up that Rainmaker. Okay. Okay. I got a hammer, I'm going in. That's nice one. I got one on this on your side. Good stuff. There's two in front of me. I'm having chat now. Okay. I can go with this. Uh, get that check, and then there's two in front. Oh, no, there's someone. Use that inkjet. Force your way up. Okay, one. I got two. Got three. Beautiful. Three down. Nice, Watch nice, up all. Nice, I'm nice. dumb. I'm dumb. One top right. Top right. Jump, jump. Oh, I don't know. Okay, wait. There's a bomb. Get out in front of the Rainmaker before the Rainmaker moves up. I do have a save bubble. I'm trying to make space. Watch out for watch the bottom. Out, on me, on me. Yeah, there's one above me. Oh, try strike. Okay, watch right, out. I'm getting out of here. Just yeah. stay alive. Yeah. 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 I'm watching. Yeah, oh, Dooley rushed me. I've got their attention here on left. Yeah, I'm backing up. Pressure. And see, Ellie, how I'm taking angles away from the team so that I force the enemy team to look into two places. Yeah. That's helped us a lot in making that push especially work. Trying to get from the uh, I might die here. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm dead. Yeah, uh, be so. careful. Don't Wait, go too here. far in. Cooler if yeah. you need to, just for getting the respawn. Watch out, Ray. Good stop. I'm trying to help you. Hey. Good, yeah, job, good job. Good yeah, job. Yeah, watch out. Thank you. They're booyah bombing. Yeah, I gotta watch out. Well, I, got the booyah. I died to the booyah. I'm gonna eat right here. Probably here. Uh, All right. Try to Going in a minute. Yeah. Wait, there's two up two here. On me. Yeah. The one nice. One v two or three v two. Yeah, it's all. Okay, all, all really left. Oh, okay, I didn't see that bubble bop. Hi, okay. Or tries okay, to go. Okay. Okay. On the way back. On the way back. Oh, I'll try to pinch him on the right. Machine. Oh, charger got me. Or one down. That's too back. That was too far up. Oh. Gotta run. Getting well, shaking. This should be fun. We're done with you. One on me. Oh, machine. Got him? There's machine. Oh, got one. Got, one. got turbo. Nice. Uh, one got me top left. Okay. Oh, oh that's Charger. Got me. Yeah, Charger got me. Okay, I'm back. Third shot still on the uh, arc wall. Okay. Oh, no. Charger got me. I should have been playing. Watch out for Zook. Okay. Hey, what's that? No need to challenge. They have to get pretty far. Yeah, they have to get down. Start much. moving up, getting oh, in their okay. way. Oh, boy. I got cooler. Oh, Whoa, oh my God. Nope. Exploded. Oh, by crap, I'm on the way back. Got Ryan. Okay, okay, nice okay. I'm halfway to jet. Halfway to jet. Oh my god. Oh, oh, charge. oh, oh collateral yeah. charger. Triple it's charger. Not watching charger. We stop okay. these. Not Wait. soon enough, though. Shoot. Okay, we got pop now. I got last jet for turned on. Okay, we go in with this. Uh, where's machine? Oh, machine's on. Machine's dead. Chat. Some bomb. Charger's weak on their zone. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna uh, ink chat. What the heck? The guy. Chat charger. Oh, no. charger got me. I try to see if I could mess with the charger for a bit. Yeah, charger's still on right. Don't don't mess with them too much. We're outnumbered. I can't help you. Oh. Okay, there. We got cooler. Oh, bubble got me. Now. Okay, rain okay. is really weak. Seconds, make sure we're staying alive and having numbers. Yeah. They're burning strikes on me. I'm gonna aim jet now. They're pushing me. Right. Um, that wasn't, I, I, I got, got by the charger. Oh no, they're running back. 
No, no, GG's. 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 Very end there, uh, when the inkjet gets called, basically when someone calls, like, I'm going in with insert special here, that means hold forward. Go, go get him. Um, so it felt like, uh, we had like two of us hit them at the same time, and then the the remaining two were a little bit further back. So yeah. Um, yeah. when when we're posturing around that fight before it starts, just make sure that when the fight does get called, that we're ready to go in. Yeah, and I think again, I'm being a little too aggressive at the front. Uh, I mean, I had their attention on plat. Like I burned an entire tri strike, and there was someone coming at me there. So we probably had a way up ramp at that point. But yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll hit, we'll hit stop there, and now I'll swap out for somebody else. All right, yeah, I can swap out this time. Okay, so I'm on ballpoint now. Yeah. Jen, why are you crying? Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> Jen. Alrighty, I'm coming. You're hearing the, the ice cream truck that's playing outside. No. <laughs> What's everybody's favorite ice cream from the ice cream truck? I always like to go to the SpongeBob one. Man. Yes, I, I was Team Vanilla. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I get it. I get it. Oh, Jem, what team were you on? Oh no, you're Vanilla. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wanted to be Vanilla, but I had to be Strawberry. You made the right choice. You Wait, the right what did you say? What did you say about Strawberry? I said uh, I wanted to be Team Vanilla, but I ended up going Strawberry because that's Let's what go. Silly Comp Sundays right no. now. Let's go, baby! No. Yes, you uh. love to see it. I was the only person on my team that was Strawberry. It was sad times. <laughs> yeah. Tragic. Or Fry. For real. Yeah, Fry got annihilated. I know. What do, what do people have against fruit? <laughs> I mean... At this point, it's almost like, what do they have against Fry? Because Fame is just nah, not doing fame. it. Nah, Fame, come oh, on. Fame. No. So sad. <laughs> I will say, I think in, in terms of Fame, Fry just has bad taste. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. argument like, that, like... She brought this on herself. Yeah, no facts. <laughs> <laughs> I think she has enough anyway. No. Oh, team. Oh, yeah, it's a team, yeah. The other CC? What's the team, alright? The other yeah, CC? Yeah, yeah. We were gonna yeah I know. CC. Okay, I'm gonna go up uh, on the top I'll bit. try to take on right. We are not gonna Let get up. Try to get from top. No, I got rushed. Watch out. There's a... Um, there go, special medic. But you went back up the top. Yeah, we're gonna it? have to back up a little bit. Mid. Oh, crab is okay. out. Yeah, crab. Got the crab. Looking at me, I may need to jump. Yeah, I'm gonna need to get out of here. I'm jumping right. to whoever. Oh, Wait, thank are you. you jumping? I was gonna jump to whoever's on top. I got one. Al, I'm jumping to you. Stop okay. him from the right side. Nice. Nice. Alright, I got a cooler. Thank you. I'll take a brain. Getting. Let's get up here. Alright, I'm coming. There's one going up on, on the plat, the rest are below on ramp. Ja, ja, bug it, bug it, bug it. He's down. I got bubble, bubble. Uh, I have hammer. Oh, my hammer's dead. I'm gonna jump yeah, to I'm the bubble. The bubble. <laughs> go, Ooh, I'm probably dead to this. I got rushed. Oh, what? Got him. Coming up on their zone. Their zone wall. That's a nice hammer, Andy. That's two down. Let's see if we can get in there and get the pickup. I'm gonna go for it. Oh, got a direct. Oh, nice. Just the splash in front, they've got crab. Here, oh, crab. Well. I'm jumping to somebody. Watch out, watch out, watch out. We're, we're, we're together. Oh, no. I gotta watch out. Give me that soda. Yeah, yeah in that position, that position, I need people moving up around the side of it, in front of it, somewhere that's not crab, on top up, of me. Back up, back up, back up. So crab, that crab I have uh, someone else for them to shoot at. Okay. I have hammer. I'm going in. One off the rail. Yeah. One down. Twice. One down. Oh, right, crab right. On, the, on their zone, on their oh, zone. Oh, oh. That, Did rain reset? Yeah. I think yeah. Yes, dude. I'm gonna jump over in the middle. Top I'm out of me. I'm dead. On the under plot. I'm jumping to you guys. Uh, Gem, oh, I'm that jumping to you. Great. Got him direct. Gem, I'm with you. Another one? Nice. Just ballpoint. Where's ballpoint? 
There's a bell phone. Yeah, there they are. Uh, they dropped yep. down. I'm gonna go up top side. I traded with the. Someone be out in front of me, be out around me, and it, okay. like, okay. tear okay. them out of the okay. angles that they can approach me. Got bucket, got bucket. They got a crab out in front. See if we can get some pressure on that. I'm gonna jump in. Got one. Oh, somebody I'm dropped pushed, behind I'm me. Pushed. I'm down, just ballpoint. I'm getting popped. We got a direct. Watch out, someone on top right. I'm out of aim. Bucket. Bucket sound. Rated. Oh. Watch out, so they're mad at No point in picking up, just uh, stay alive. Yeah, just straight up. Yeah, I'll back it. up. I did, I did. Okay, I'm, back. I'm jumping to you, Al. Uh, oh, I am probably dead. I am not. Oh, oh, now I, I am. Oh, they have I, 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 I don't have it yet. Good push, though, guys. Yeah. Good push. Yeah. Jet ready. Yeah, I put cooler down. I put cooler down. Got one. Oh. I'm gonna start pushing up and getting the inkjet out. Good job. Good job. Oh, nice. well, we just killed all of them. That works. Okay, guys, right there. Underneath. 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 They're jumping out. Nice job. Played wipe. I have hammer. Right, oh, they're going uh, up on we top. We can play this top. really slow. Play to stall, not to score. They're up on top. Oh, I did. Frame maker. Special medic. Yeah, back up. On the way back. Being chased. Jamie, you're alone. Yep. Ryan. Good. Try got me. Got double? Are you dead? How are you not dead? Hey. Nice. Second is bubble. Okay. On the way back. Good we don't over. need to pick up. Yeah, we're not. Good no. job, good job, good job. Sorry, right, Ray, you can jump back in. Yeah, I'm going back. Oh, they, they have, have an inch. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be dangerous, but. No, you'll be okay. Uh, uh, one got me in ramp, top of ramp. I didn't Just know the crab play for your life. through the uh, rainmaker. I'm about to feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get trade. Right okay, get into defensive positions. Okay, be ready with specials. Yeah, we're going in. One down. We can probably oh, just... Oh, they're so good. Yeah. Alright, nice. yeah. yeah. let's go. GG's. 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 Um, job, biggest thing I would say there is on the pushes, um, what you need to do for the Rainmaker is not stay near the Rainmaker, but what you do need to do is cover all of the places that enemy players can attack the Rainmaker from. There were uh, at least two or three opportunities there, pushes, where enemy players just snuck in from like flank routes that we can be covering as the front line. We need to not be letting them into those areas. Um, don't play to like take as much space forward on the map if the Rainmaker can't safely hit. Like we're staying, um, our, our mindset is like, where is the Rainmaker? Where are they gonna come from if they wanna attack the Rainmaker? So for example, if we're at the top of their ramp, one of the things we need to cover is someone coming up the wall of the ramp but we were all just kind of pushing down ramp because we figured, oh, this is the path that we're taking, so this is what we need to control. Um, you just when want to start ballpoint. What we really need to stop them from doing is getting to the Rainmaker carrier. We need to be a defensive perimeter around it and make sure that like any area that they could approach it from, they're getting shot at first. Sounds good. Okay. Um, but uh, definitely great job on defense. Um, we, we held them even to getting that first checkpoint until the very end, and once we got there, it was very clean. Um, don't pick up any of my mechanical habits there, Waylord. Oh, <laughs> I do no. not play this weapon. No, uh, but uh, yeah, that gave you a, a, a decent idea. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I can switch what's, uh, who am I? Okay, I'm switching out for the, yeah. the V-Blaster now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, good night. V-Blaster, my beloved. Oh. V-Blaster, let's go. <laughs> Of 
Unfortunately, I do not have a build for this guy. Two ball points? Let's go. No. <laughs> Alright. Nice hat. No. <laughs> My drip is immaculate. Honestly, like, I'm very envious right now. With the sandals? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just take it in. Absorb the. I could the never, vibes. honestly. Like, I'm, a, I'm actually intimidated. Big Sandals Blaster Edition. Ready? Take notes. No. I got it. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> perfectly with the flames painted on the side of my weapon. Yeah. yeah. Dad sandals Hell plus yeah. flames. Come on. Perfect combo. And the hat. The hat. The hat was perfect. <laughs> Yeah, double bucket is really common on this map mode. I'm gonna go try right. to get pop. Take top. I'm not gonna get pop. I'm down with Izzy. Two underneath. I'm jumping sure. you, oh, whoever's up on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch out, double bucket drop. Right. One bucket is local. Last remaining bucket. Got one. Low. One on our zone. Okay, they're all dead. Great job, great job, great job. I just went for this start. Uh, we really don't want to go for the left if we can help it, because the right side gives us better pushing options on the yeah, 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 yeah. I dropped them. And, uh... Yeah, I realized that. There oh. Now will you grab? Watch out for the tries to get on top. You need to grab? Yeah, yeah. I'm very close to my ink jet. Okay. I'm down. That try's gonna get me. Okay, That's well, dead push. I have ink chat though. Uh, Will, you're. Uh, watch how they're chasing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see. Will, I'm with you. Yeah. Oh, they, they're ink jetting. Yeah, ink jet him back. Yeah. Right to the face. <laughs> oh no, he got me. No, um, it's alright, it's alright, it's alright. I got a kill oh, there. Man. We didn't know, but I didn't know either. I should be able to win this, but I did not. Sorry. Oh, watch out. This frame In right street. How are they not dead? Okay, got right. Okay, good get good. out of there if you can. You're yeah, gonna be one No, Rain almost got me. Watch out for Shrike's again. Shrike's again got me. Saving shit. Shrike is crazy now. Watch out for Rain. Where's the Rainmaker recall? Wait, there's, uh, tries on, by Jim, by Jim. Try weak. Does it jump to him? Get them both. Get all three, oh, all three, all three. Oh, okay, the last one's here, last one's here. Okay, go. Good. Watch out for the bomb. Oh, one's behind me, one's behind me, one's behind me. Oh, wait. Yeah, one is behind me. Are you I'm down. No. Yeah. You got it. I got it. Good job, good job, good job. No, I might be dead though. Let's see. Call. No, I'm, right. I'm out. On the wall. No. Fuck it. Slosh shiver. Alan, jumping in. Okay. Hey. 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 Check all Oh, lag. Good try though. Lag. Oh, they got dueling. Oh, wait, the oh, dueling is lagging. Oh, wait a second. I killed that dueling like you know, ages ago. Watch out for that. One blood behind you, behind, behind you. Oh, one behind, behind, behind. Hit him once. Got him. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Uh, tries up by you, Ellie. There's one on me. Uh, Watch out, yeah. dueling's right there. Lagging dueling. The, I, oh my the God. lagging dueling. I don't care about the lagging dueling. I have AoE. Damn, <laughs> That's Jenny. true. Get him! <laughs> Jenny, they're weak. All right, we got pop. We got um, pop. They're all weak. I didn't get one, though. Watch out for. Her. The what is with the dually, bro? Whoa. There's no he way. Is. Oh, I'm okay. Got dually. Try's gonna kill me. No, Stuka got me. I'm rainmaker man. Push me down. <laughs> yeah, I'll stay alive. Watch out. There's a bucket behind that wall. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, I'll. Hey, I'm, glad they didn't that. I'm gonna go up this way. Ah, uh, bottom right, bottom right. They're coming up the wall now. All three. I feel nice. Oh wait, they inked out. 
backing up. Wait, King Chat might be dead? No, King Chat lives. Okay, I'm very close to that. One week on me? Uh, Lost just after me. Watch out, Al. Chip for they drop for me? Two, two for me? Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, dead. Two are over by Jim. One in our street, coming back up. Oh, no way, I got Charizard. Alright, this is still totally winnable, guys. One right. Wait, one behind us. Blind shot? Yeah. I have hammer. Going with hammer now. One down. Nice, one. Down. Trying to follow you in. See if we can pick up. There's somebody behind me. There's behind me. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. nice. One bottom left. Got him. Oh, can you grab? And then we yeah. push. Okay, go left. I mean, right. Right. Watch out for uh, Christ Locker. They're Watch all out. three down there. They're all three down there. Yeah, yeah stay above. Got one. Uh, we need to get in around the right side. Go, go, go. All three dead. No, they're behind, they're behind. You got this out. They're gonna kill me. It's okay. Wait, we can get a pop? jump in. <gasps> no! What? No, we totally no. gotta got that pop. Rip, GG's. That was good, though. That was good at the end. Um, part of the play right at the end. This is a, a, a very, like, map mode specific thing. Um, when I'm covering the corner, as we're trying to come around there, someone else should slide out behind me to the right, because, like, I'm covering them so they can get around there. And that way, if someone comes up over that big wall on the right, you've got someone shooting at them right away. And also, if someone tries to come up the ramp, we have two different angles that we're shooting at them from, because we're shooting from opposite sides of the first checkpoint. Yeah. Uh, so, so we want to use that for a piece of cover. We want, also want to be able to cover the front right. So while I'm covering that side, we want some other frontliner going over to the right and taking up a position there and getting set up in that corner. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah I'll um, it now. Um, Al, you carried with the 20. Let's yeah, go. Holy. Let's go, Al. <laughs> Hey, Ray, like, most of the picks that I'm getting there are more positioning-based than they are, like, me being good at aiming this thing or anything like that. It's that I'm in the right places because um, I'm catching people where they're not looking at me, and that's yeah. the goal here. Um, but your goal as a Slayer is for other people to get the enemy team's attention and then for you to capitalize on them looking the wrong way and going pew pew. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because yeah. uh, at the end of the first start of the match, you did show me like a really good like way to you know go around the side and such. And I was, usually I take a like the legit far back right. And so you know, I mean, then again, when it comes to blaster, I tend to I mean I guess uh, use more auto bombs than blaster, even though I'm supposed to capitalize on blaster more and auto bombs a little. But, yeah, yeah, the auto bombs are like a scouting method. They're like, yeah. is there somebody over here? I need to check. Yeah. Right, you can join. Yeah, you can join. Oh, yeah, on the way. I'm so much faster now. Get used to the aim. <laughs> yeah. Then Zalco crazy. I went from yeah. mid, uh, mid weight with Ninja Squid to lightweight without. <laughs> tactical. Plus <laughs> oh. tactical or not cheap. Okay. Zoom, zoom. Yeah. What is the other map? Magic. Yeah, 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 imagine. <laughs> it's <a> map. <laughs> that. I don't mind. Flounder is like one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah I prefer Haggle though. Really? Yeah. I like yeah. Haggle. Yeah, I know I like Haggle. I'm a big Flounder fan. Flounder's like, very unique. Like, you have to play differently than you do on other maps. It's fun. Huh. Let's go! No. <laughs> Jester? <laughs> Is that Jester? No, I haven't seen. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Should we go for pop? Pop the cooler. No. Okay. Never mind. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm got pop. Okay, got pop. 70 to cooler. Okay. okay. Drop down. Uh, right. That's three. Holy crap. Good job, good job, good job. Huge, huge. Right. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, last one brush. below. Where is the octo brush? Keep me up and going. Okay. Oh, I'm jumping yeah, in right here. They're by you, Alan. I got him. Octo brush actually is on top. 
Blah below. Out, right? Where? Okay, got yeah, There you go. Watch out for not Nautilus. I'm very close to. Uh, I might need help pop. popping. Pop. They're gonna pop, pop. here. Pop. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here. Yeah, we can. Uh, get I have to actually avoid uh, the rain. Okay. I'm probably yeah. Good. Yeah. Sorry, I saw the pop. Uh, they're and, on yeah. their, oh, their flat. Oh, they're pushing up and pop. Yeah, we we don't need their street until a lot later. They're better to win the high ground. They're dropping Nautilus. down. They're going to be at, at goal here. We need to yeah, make sure yeah, we're team them in the goal a little bit. I'm down. Directed. Okay, got blob. No, blob didn't die. <laughs> oh, you're going to die to pop if you don't. Yeah. Back up. Ray back up. Ray back up. Oh, no, I, I cut in. Rip. Watch the rain. Watch the rush on top. Me on top. Got two. He's weak. Not on. Not, 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 not. Nice. I have hammer. Nice. Okay, they're jumping to below. Yeah, where are they at? Careful, okay, we don't let them grab it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch the rain. We need to have oh, control okay. of the area between them and the, the rainmaker at all times. Watch out. Yeah, Bob's right down. there beside you. All right, you have him back up. There you go. One on our flat. Oh, Push yeah, you're right. I, didn't, I was Got him. There you go, next one. Uh, oh, one week, nice. Back, bro. 2v2. They're gonna oh, get popped. Bubble to save. Yeah. I put a bubble. Okay. Make sure we're spreading out now that we're done with the bubble. Yeah. T-Tech, right T-Tech there. on left. He's okay, got, got one. Uh, uh, Nautilus in the way, way on this oh, one. I'm jumping to Nautilus. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No. Watch out, right side. Whale, I'm jumping to you. Okay, got blob. Watch out. Nod is flanking us. Not on me. Oh, I was trying to flank this. I don't know where it is. No, they're they're behind. They're on their flat. They came back for me. Oh, no, I got me. Before I could grab juice. Okay. Surely. Nope. No, I, yeah. I'm jumping to you, Jim. Okay, I'm picking our top. Got one. I'm getting out of here. Oh, no. I got my Nautilus. Oh, I'm dead to rain. No, I'm not. Down, they're going to back up for it. Yeah. Octobrush is weak. There's someone's in our base. Watch out, Eddie. Where? Uh, behind you, Eddie. Behind you. It's not. They're up on black. They got dead. me. Nice. Okay, got rain. No, rain oh. live. Someone jumped down on top of me. Watch out. Watch out. Okay, I'm trying to pick up. I got one. On left, on left, on left. I got you. Nice. Not on ramp. Oh, I got rainmaker. What the? Hell? Not down. Okay, go, go, go. I'll throw again. Right. I'm going. This is the last. Uh, last. One up front. One up front. Rush. Oh, one jump, jump. Wait got him. Me. Nice, nice. Right, blob is after me. Blob, top left. Oh, blob, got blob. Go down. Where you watch out? Okay. Oh, bomb, bomb will kill me. Someone's on the Where bottom right. I'm getting him. Where did he go? Of course not. He's got dead. him. They're down. Good job. Okay, not on. Is on below us. Yeah. Brush there's also not brush below us. Yeah. There's not. Okay, brush. Right. Yeah, they're gonna split there, just Yeah, I got not though. I mean, uh, brush. Right, right, go with me. Oh no. It's okay, they're dead, they're, dead, they're, dead. Yeah. they're all dead. Got one. Only one real. Oh, oh, yeah, bubbler, bubbler. Hey, blobs right here. Got blob. Floor okay. in front. Let's go. Come on, push, push, push. Okay, okay. Brush on me. Watch out, brush. Yeah, I got brush. Got the brush. Okay, I'm coming back with Hey, we're gonna have advantage oh, here. Oh, oh, no way. What happened? Oh, Rainmaker. Oh, Rainmaker's explosion got me. Rainmaker timer. Oh, I might die here to the explosion. I'm on the way back. I'm on the way back. Bubbles. Oh, this is not aware. T Tech dropped to get me. Ray did it. I'm uh, it's just you, Ray. Uh, Be careful. Ray, back up. Oh. Oh, nice. On the way. On the way. Yeah, um, there's one above you, right? Yeah, I could brush got me. I don't think they know. Oh. Do they know? Um, they're dropping it right. Defend rain, defend rain. Down. 10 seconds, we need rain. Got, got, rain. got double. Okay, yeah, we need to be able to pop this. Oh. Oh, rip. Uh, yeah, but hey, Halofarm got me, Trey. Ah, GG. Ah, GG, guys. GG's. Uh, so, we're having some problems with Rainmaker objective here that we weren't having on zones. Um, the, the the idea with Rainmaker is you always have players in between the Rainmaker and the enemy team, wherever they could be. Um, that's the front line's job, to be out there and be that perimeter. And it feels like sometimes uh, we've got that perimeter and we're not using it, 
or sometimes people are just kind of walking by us and getting in on flanks. Um, so we want to be more aware of like where can they come from so that we're stopping those those holes. Uh, second thing is um, we're being really, really overcautious on pushing the Rainmaker. Um, there are times where we've got like only one player alive and the Rainmaker's not pushing. Uh, yeah. So there's, there were some opportunities there like we basically never want to be in a position where we're actually dying to Rainmaker explosion. Like that almost never happens at top level because yeah. we're just either we're pushing it and we're, we're rolling the dice. We're trying to get that lead. Yeah. Um, I think that was the first time. That's hundred percent of the shots us. you don't take kind of idea. So yeah. yeah. So in those sorts of positions, like if we've got like two players down, like figure out where the other two are and move forward in a way that they can't attack you. Um, and if we're, we don't have control of that, then tell the frontliners where to go, where the where like the threat is actually coming from, because they're not doing their jobs if they're not in between you and those players. As soon as yeah. you have a 3v2, in theory, one holds Rainmaker, the other two can test the two players that are trying to chase the Rainmaker, and you should be able to move forward for free. So once you get in those positions, if you can't move forward for free, there's something that's going wrong in like the decisions that are being made about where we're positioning. Yeah. So. What do you? Um, that was good though. That was good. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It was really awesome. Uh, genuinely, yeah, for it's really a lot. Our, like... our first coaching session ever. Like, highly recommend. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.